Hi everyone, my name is Renee, Program Officer with EcoSchools Canada. On behalf of EcoSchools, thank you for viewing this webinar as part of our 2023 Eco Summit. I'm pleased to introduce Emily from EcoSchools Canada to present this webinar, The Circular Economy. Emily is the EcoSchools Canada Program Coordinator and is driven to find ways that allow youth to understand issues in their communities and empower them to take action. Be sure to check out the accompanying worksheets for this webinar, which can be found linked in the, in the description below and in the presentation schedule at ecoschools.ca slash ecosummit. We would also like to acknowledge that the Ecosummit has been made possible with support from Natural Resources Canada. We're glad to have you join us for this presentation and now I'll pass it over to Emily. Welcome to the Ecoschools webinar on the circular economy. So today we'll be learning about waste as a resource. We will start today by going over what the circular economy is and how it relates to the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. Next, we will explore some of the actions you can take to contribute to the circular economy in your classroom. Finally, we'll end today by reviewing how you can add these actions to your plan on the EcoSchool certification application. Okay, so let's get started with what is the circular economy? So before we can talk about types of economies, it's helpful to define economy. So an economy involves all activities related to the production, consumption, and trade of goods and services. When we think about the life cycle of most products, we think about it in the context of a linear economy. So if an economy extracts the necessary resources, uses those resources to create a product, and then disposes of the resources when the product is no longer needed, this is called a linear economy. That's because the materials move in a line from resource extraction to waste disposal. This type of economy leads to large amounts of waste and puts a strain on our natural resource systems. Let's look at the life cycle of a piece of paper. So in a linear economy, the trees would be cut down to produce a sheet of paper. The paper would be used one time and then it would be thrown into the waste bin. Every time we need more paper, more trees would need to be cut down. In contrast, a circular economy retain aims to retain and recover as much of a resource as possible by reusing, repairing, or recycling products and materials. This type of economy keeps resources in use longer and it reduces the strain on our natural resource systems, allowing them to replenish. So if we return back to our example with this piece of paper, um, in a circular economy, the paper would be used on one side, maybe even reused on the other side. And then once it can be used no more, it can be recycled into what will hopefully become some sort of new paper, uh, paper product, maybe even another sheet of paper. In this circular economy, there's no need to cut down more trees and use brand new resources and materials to create more paper. We can create new things using the resources that we already have. Sorry, the resources that we already have in use. So a circular approach to paper production helps to conserve vast quantities of trees, water and energy, uh, and it reduces the greenhouse gas emissions and other pollutants into the atmosphere. If you're curious to know more about how paper specifically is recycled, we have this great webinar on our website called Let's Talk Paper. Uh, the link is right there if anyone's interested in, in exploring it further, uh, where we really talk about how is paper recycled and what does the life cycle of a paper look like. So if this is interesting to you, I highly recommend checking out that one as well. So there's many ways that you can contribute to a circular economy in our individual lives and in our school communities. One interesting way to illustrate the uh, circular economy is the concepts of the three R's hierarchy. So you might know them as reduce, reuse, recycle. So you might be familiar with that phrase and the order of that phrase matters. So the hierarchy prioritizes reducing our overall impact to the environment. So it's important to always start with reducing. Right? So the least amount of, of materials being pulled from the earth. Then we're talking about reusing. So now those materials are already in, in our economy. And so we're trying to keep them there right before they get they become waste. So we can do this through reusing, repurposing, repairing, refurbishing, remanufacturing. And then finally, when we feel like something is no longer usable, instead of throwing it into the waste, we want to focus on recycling so that we can pull whatever materials that are still that could be used as um, it can still be used in manufacturing and get it back into the economy. So the hierarchy here is important. We go reduce, then reuse, then recycle. So by reducing first, we avoid making waste in the first place. 
we can reduce our waste by carefully considering if we need to consume a product. So here's an example of two eco schools aiming to reduce waste by encouraging students to consider the packaging of their school uh, of their food. By reusing or repurposing a product, it stays in the economy um, without requiring other resources. So here you can see an example of uh, some eco schools in action. So we have an example of a goose bin. Uh, goose stands for good on one side. Uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the webinar. And you can see a poster uh, used for an items drive. By repairing or refurbishing a product, uh, the, by repairing or refurbishing, a product is able to stay in use with the help of additional resources. So here you can see a clever example of refurbishing using a pop can waste to create a lampshade. By recycling, a product is able to be returned uh, return into a resource to create something new. So here we have an EcoSchools poster for proper recycling practices and another EcoSchool recycling, uh, another EcoSchool recycling their used textiles. So a circular economy relies on these R's. Becoming familiar with them and thinking about how you can implement them into your school is your first step towards contributing to a circular economy. So let's talk a little bit more now about how you can specifically bring those circular economy principles into your school's community through existing eco-schools actions. So there's many actions that eco teams can take to bring the circular economy into their classroom. Today, we're gonna to explore six of them in more detail. So the first action we're gonna look at is the goose paper action. So this action involves students creating their own goose, good on one side, bins for their classrooms and using them on a daily basis. Here are some creative goose bins that eco teams have made. As you can see, they range in design from simple to more animated and complex. There may be no better time to make a goose paper bin or run a goose paper campaign than during National Goose Paper Day or leading up to it. On this day of action, you can join other students, teachers, workplaces, and families across the country in getting creative and promoting effective ways to reduce, reuse, and recycle paper. So this year, it's gonna be on Thursday, April 6th. And I have a little, a little video about Goose Day. I'm just gonna play for you. What's good on one side? Pizza? A painting? Goose paper. Goose paper? That's right. Goose paper is paper that's good on one side. Join EcoSchools Canada and hundreds of schools and workplaces across the country to celebrate National Goose Paper Day on the first Thursday in April. Why? Did you know that paper and paper products account for more than one third of all of Canada's waste? So, how do you take part in National Goose Paper Day? To start, get organized, gather a team and start planning. Next, get creative by designing goose paper bins for all rooms in your building. Then, engage your whole school community. Finally, share your creations with all of Canada. And when you're done with both sides of your paper, recycle it and Cascades will turn it into something new. Check out our website for more resources and information. Amazing. What's good on... There we go. So we actually have uh, even more resources, including sheets, activities, and videos to help your school celebrate Goose Day this year. Uh, and they can be found on our website and in the EcoSchool certification application. Um, here's a couple of tips on how to run a successful Goose Paper action. So first, consider hosting an assembly to mark the start of your event. Next, you might consider creating some waste-free awards or prizes for the most creative Goose Bin. Once the event has been launched and the boxes are made, Regularly screen the goose paper to ensure that there's nothing with sensitive or private information on it. The next action we're going to discuss is the divert textile waste action, where eco teams divert textile waste through fun and creative campaign. In Canada, each household throws away an average of 81 pounds of textiles a year, making up for 5 to 10% of municipal landfills. This action has eco teams take action to divert textile waste through a fun and creative campaign. Here you can see some students investigating the life cycle of a cotton shirt and the environmental impacts of each step of the process, as well as collect bags of, as well as collecting bags of textiles from the school's broader community that will be recycled by an external partner. 
So here's a few ideas for events that your eco team could run if they want to do the diverse textile waste action. So maybe you could consider running a clothing drive for a local partner or registered charity. This may be a partner that redistributes gently used clothing or collects and recycles used textiles. Select a partner or charity that prioritizes safety and ethics around collection and recycling and distribution procedures. And be sure to check with the school, be sure to check with your school board or district when selecting a partner to work with. Your eco team could also host a clothing swap where the community exchanges clothing they no longer want to wear. You may also want to host a textile repair clinic to help lengthen the lifespan of your clothing and textiles. Finally, you may consider a, a repurpose event to turn your old textiles into something new, like t-shirt quilts or reusable bags. Next, we'll discuss the Sort Your Waste action, where eco teams track and reduce the contamination in their garbage and recycling bins, raise awareness, and establish effective waste sorting programs. In this action, eco teams track waste sorting practices to learn how their school's current garbage, recycling, and organic bins are being used. And then they engage in their school, then they engage their school in learning about the importance of properly sorting and communicate best practices in waste sorting. So here you can see some creative ways that an eco school decorated um, waste receptacles to encourage proper waste sorting. You'll also see some waste sorting awards that an eco team presented to classrooms with the best, best waste sorting practices. So here's a couple tips on how you can successfully run a sort your waste action. So first you could prepare your bins and make signs. Ensure that each room in your school has waste receptacles paired with clear signage informing people of what goes in each bin. You can make recycling posters or contact your municipality for waste sorting posters. This action often starts as a week or a month long campaign, but it can turn into an established school wide practice. And like it, we saw before on the last page, create awards for classrooms with the best sorting practices. You can make it a school-wide competition. Next action we'll discuss is the recycling personal electronic waste action, where eco teams collect electronic waste or e-waste from their school community and, to ins and ensure that the items get properly reused and recycled. So eco teens are encouraged to raise awareness and encourage participation in their recycle electronic waste campaign. Consider hosting a campaign, kickoff assembly, creating posters, writing an e-waste collection bin contest, or posting facts on the school website and social media. Here are a few examples of electronic waste collection bins from our eco schools. Again, a couple of tips on how you can run a successful uh, recycle electronic waste campaign. So first, does your school or board, uh, does your school board or district have an approved e-waste collector? If you are recycling, uh, if you are recycling school board or district owned materials, make sure you work with their approved collector. Reach out to your facilities or IT department to find out the process in your board or district. If you do not want to collect and store e-waste at your school, consider encouraging staff and students to participate in a retailer take back program where electronics are securely dropped off directly to retailers with e-waste recycling programs. Ensure that all participants know how to remove all personal information from their devices. And finally, consider creating fun awards to be presented to the individual or class with the most creative e-waste collection bins or the highest number of items collected. For more tips and guidance on a safe and effective e-waste campaign, be sure to read all the guidelines provided for this action on the EcoSchool certification application. Okay, so next we'll be discussing the repurposing and innovative recycling action, where eco teams recycle, repurpose, or repair items that are not recyclable through the regular recycling stream to help divert waste from the landfill. So here we see some creative approaches to this action. On the left, we have books that were created by reusing goose paper. And on the right, we have a ladder and stool that were made from broken hockey st sticks and scrap materials. So here's a couple tips on how you can run a successful repurposing and innovative recycling action. So first, you may wanna determine what you want to collect and if you'll be repurposing or upcycling the items and sending it to be recycled through an external sorry, or sending it to be recycled through an external partner. If you are repurposing or upcycling, 
consider creating awards for the most creative uh, repurposing. Uh, promote your upcycling project or campaign with posters, assemblies, announcements, and make sure to label bins and provide clear instructions. Okay, the last item we're going to discuss today is the conduct a waste audit action. Uh, do you know the quantity and types of recyclable materials that end up in your school's garbage due to improper sorting? Well, you can find out the answer and more by conducting a waste audit. So it's highly recommended to use the comprehensive, a comprehensive guide that can provide instruction on how to conduct a waste audit, uh, such as the EcoSchool's waste audit resource or another resource of your choice. So here in these images, we see an eco team that recorded the weight and percentage distribution of waste by each of their rooms in their school and then shared their findings. In the other images, we can see eco schools weighing and sorting their waste. So a couple of tips that we have to make sure that you have the most successful conduct a waste audit action. Uh, so first, a waste audit is a great first step towards many of the other actions that we talked about today. Uh, two, conduct your garbage and recycling and optionally organics audit on the same day. This will save setup time uh, and paint a more complete picture of your school's daily waste production. Choose a typical school day for your audit, not one that has special events. Uh, also, on that note, don't announce the audit in advance. You'll get more accurate data. Following the waste audit, ensure all of the waste returns to the proper streams of disposal. The data collected from this action is help, helping us calculate your school's environmental impact with our partners at ArcScoru. Uh, you can view the waste metrics on the impact page of the EcoSchool Eco certification application which we're gonna talk about more about at the end of this uh, webinar. So these actions, the six that we just talked about, can all be connected to the Sustainable Development Goals, also known as the SDGs, um, a collection of 17 interlinked global goals designed to create a blueprint to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all. They recognize that ending poverty must go hand in hand with strategies to improve health and educa education, reduce inequality, and spur economic growth, all while tackling climate change to working to preserve our oceans and forests. So most notably, the circular economy actions can be connected to SGG number 12, responsible consumption and production. So I'd like to finish the webinar today by highlighting where you can find all of the information we just discussed and how to add these actions to your EcoSchools plan as well as where to fill out the questions that contribute to your EcoSchool certification. So to earn recognition and find resources and support uh, for the great work that your school is doing, make sure that your school is registered on the EcoSchool certification application. Um, this is where you will find resources for all of the actions we talked about today and more. So on the screen, you'll see an example of how to add an action to your school plan. So first, you navigate to the library. Let's see, yeah. Uh, next, there's so the arrow is now pointing to the search bar. So you can search for a keyword in the action or you can even search by category. So in this case, we've searched paper. All of the related actions will pop up. In this case, we've searched for goose paper. So there it is. By clicking that small plus sign in the upper right hand corner of the goose paper card, you can then add it to your plan. Now, once it's in your plan, you can open it up. So when you click on the card, you'll see everything you need to learn about this action. So this includes um, information about the action. So connections to the curriculum, connections to the SDGs, even pictures of other schools and how they uh, brought this action into their school. You're also gonna have the action guide, which provides simple steps to completing this action. There's also helpful resources and the certification questions. So to review, here are the steps you can take if you're interested in taking action on the circular economy this year. You can create your action plan in the ECA. Remember that registering your school and creating a plan is not an obligation to certify. It simply just gives you an access to a wide variety of great resources to support your environmental learning and action. Once you've created your plan, add any of the circular economy actions we've talked about today to your plan. And of course, select any other EcoSchools action that your school is undertaking this year. 
Once you have a plan, it's time to put it into action. So remember that you can always contact us with any of your questions, and that is at programs at ecoschools.ca. Just a reminder that social media is a great way to stay connected with ecoschools. Twitter is our most dynamic channel with many board school, uh, with many schools and boards and general public involved. Uh, if you have a Twitter account, you can follow us and we'll follow you back. Uh, thank you for watching the webinar today. We hope you found it helpful. We would also like to acknowledge that this webinar was created in support from Cascades. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.